Welcome to the Orlando Lions Den Podcast. Your number one Orlando City podcast. For the fans, by the fans. For the fans, by the fans. Keeping you in the know on all things Orlando City since 2018. Welcome to another edition of Orlando Lions Den Podcast. I'm your host, Jason J.J. Jose. Uh, hold on, let me breathe. Season 7, Episode 9, and I'm talking Poppy out already. But before that, let's get to our good friends. We got Mike. What's happening, Mike? Uh, you know, man, another day. Uh, I'm here. I'm living. Had a good weekend, honestly. I did. Saw family over Easter and took my folks to Universal, took my dad to the game. At least we got something out of it. It wasn't a total loss, but, uh, you know, at least uh, at least it was a nice time. I'll take that. But, uh, yeah, man, those were good. Everything else, Orlando City related, not so much. Uh, yeah, I'm happy you had time with your family. I mean, that was good, especially on Easter and everything. I had time with my family, contemplated on the Orlando City game all day yesterday, Easter, you know. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Eddie, how are you? How was church yesterday? It was good. It was good. My daughter's in the choir. They, they got down pretty good Easter. Um, that, that was that was fun. There was uh, three three services, you know, big day for us. And the third service, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm – uh, I watched my daughter do her part on the first two and did the service. And the third one, I was like, you know what? I, I know how this goes. So I'm going to watch Arsenal and Man City in my car while the service is on. And my wife was helping <laughs> the children's church. So so that, that brought some enjoyment. That's a good, good top, tough spot draw. You got to get some footy enjoyment from somewhere, right? And Because uh, Orlando City didn't give it to me. But at the same time, there is sometimes comfort in uh, in the past. And uh, JJ, for as long as he's been doing this, that you know, there's a little, fi- fem- you know, it's a little familiar to be um, doing this podcast when we're not playing. We're not playing great, so for some reason, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little more comfortable than I thought I'd be. Kind of like, you know what? We've been here before. So. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. It, it doesn't. It doesn't feel that bad, right? I it think doesn't. we've had worse. Absolutely. We're just our expectations that we felt this year, you know, right. coming in were so high that it, yeah. it's just brought everybody down except me, you know, yeah, 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 no, so far. Yeah. no, for a lot of things. Did you at least pray for Orlando city while you were at church? You know what? You know, so, so, sometimes I just don't waste my prayers on, on things I can't actually control. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, honestly, on that Sunday at that time, I was uh, I was more in the Man City. I was thinking about Orlando, <laughs> Orlando at, at that point. You know, you know, I just okay. I, I let it. I let it be. I, I will admit because be you know when I take my vitamins at night, you know, like Hulk Hogan says, take your vitamins. I take them, yeah. you know, and then I pray. I pray for Orlando City that we get a new coach and uh, hopefully start winning. But that's and, for and a little of, bit later. You know, for a little bit, and speaking of on brand, I mean, it's hilarious who you have in your background. Of course, you have Latino. I didn't notice wow. that. Yeah, Hell, you never <laughs> noticed that. No, I didn't. That's from his. That's from his locker, original nice. locker. I got it from him. That was a gift from him. So nice. yeah, um, let's thank our sponsors real quick. We thank. Uh, go ahead, Eddie. You're first. Go ahead. Okay. Give a shout out well, to yourself. Oh, okay. Well, I had actually a listener reach out today. Um, one of their, their companies is um, is going leaving the state, so you got to find a new place, new insurance. So we're, we're going to work on that together. And um, so anything insurance related, I'm here to help. Um, especially in a home, homes are going up a lot. Companies are leaving that you, you don't have to just accept the, the higher rates. So I, I will tell you if I have something better. If I don't, I will try to usually find you something somewhere and make sure I can help whichever way. No pushy, no obligation, no cost. I'm just uh, here to help. This is what I do. And, and I'm sure, you, you know, other people do what they do and they do it well. And I like to think I do too. Um, we have, we have Leo Gonzalez speaking of doing things well, right. Um, mortgage lender. 
with the Epic Mortgage team. He helped me actually um, do a cash out refi. I locked in my rates years ago. He told me stuff was going to come up, and I caught it right in time. I got a great rate thanks to Leo. He really helped me with that. So, yeah, you got to make sure you, you save money and you do things uh, as good as possible. These things um, have expensive repercussions if you don't do them right. So you want to get a professional like Leo on your side. Field Turf USA. In my opinion, they should put field turf around the whole border of the, of the pitch, not just the area where the, the sidelines are or where the, the players um, benches. Because, man, the pitch is looking rough on the you know on the border. Um, but speaking of field turf, they they they're uh, in Metro Company Car Tarquette out of France. They do most of the big pitches all over the world with their hybrid grass and uh, the borders with their turf. And um, we're, we're glad to have them for a sponsor since on um, day one. And who else do we got? We got missing one right fubu tv fubu Fubo. tv don't do like i did and get your, your membership trial and not hit the link well i did it again the second time we played calgary i didn't have fs1 so i uh i used the fubu again this time i used the right link so but right now there's a lot of streaming options they, they have a ton of soccer a ton of other shows a lot of access hit that uh, qr code that'll take you over to a special that we have with them and that'll be helpful. And Fubu TV has got some great options, great different packages all over the world, football from all over the place. So check them out as well. And I think that's everybody, David. That's everybody. You got that correct. Oh, so man. now let's talk about Orlando City. Let's talk about uh, the draw against the Red Bulls of New Jersey on Saturday. Um, it was a 1 1 tie. We uh, basically, the Red Bulls came in. Uh, they came in to play defense, I think, uh, you know. And then uh, th I think they were they were going for the tie, and if they got lucky, they would get the win. It would be great for them coming into uh, Interco Stadium. So I think uh, that's what they wanted was a tie or a lucky win, and they almost got the lucky win. So basically, Kyle Smith, in the first half, uh, fouls Lewis Morgan inside the box, gets the PK. Lewis Morgan uh, nails it in. Red Bulls are up one nothing. Then um, we basically go into halftime down one nothing. We come back in the second half with no substitutions. Kyle Smith playing center defensive mid. Uh, Dagger Dan playing right back. That seems like it's been it's typical for the last two games. Uh, Luis Muriel playing, I don't know, a 10, 9, 5, 4, 3, 2, whatever. He's all over the field also holding the ball. Facundo Torres walking around him like a lost puppy trying to get the ball along with Ivan Angulo. At one point, there's three of them on one side next to each other. No line, no less than two feet from each other with Muriel having the ball. Um and then Angulo playing the left side. The second half, we're looking for some substitutions. We finally get uh, one in the 62 of them in the 66th minute. We get Martin Ojeda and uh, Cartagena in. And then in the 82nd minute, Cesar Araujo comes in, Jack Lynn comes in, and then in the 90th, Brucalo, Bricolo comes in. But right at that 88th, 89th minute, Ivan Angulo crosses it in. Uh, Jack Lynn does the ghost uh, kick behind the heel. Then ever it touches him, hits one of the New York Red Bull defenders, which I think he was trying to kick out, but he, it hit his shin and went right into the back end of the net, and there's that 1-1 one, one draw against the Red Bulls. I'm going to let you guys go first, and then I'll talk. I, I've kind of given my point on Din After Dark, but I'll do it here again, too. But, Eddie, your thoughts on this uh, game? 1-1 one, one tie. Um, I want to know, and we, we might, we'll go into that here in a second or two, but mm -hmm. some of your thoughts of the game first off. Well, it's something I've been harping on since last season. I mean, at this point, anyone who listens to Dan at the dark or listens when I'm on the podcast, they got to be tired of me saying this, which is we only score almost exclusively in transition. We score counterattacks. We score in transition. We score. When we, we got a fast break, whatever you want to call it. And the Red Bulls, they, they're a team that they, they used to be known for that, you know, energy drink, gag and press kind of 
high press kind of stuff. They haven't really been doing that, especially under this coach. What they kind of do, they counter press quickly, and they they have a mid block. That's kind of what they they've done against us, and they pick their spots when they counter press. So um, that's what that's what they did this match. We couldn't get through the mid block. Uh, the XG was in in the Red Bulls' favor. They actually countered quickly. They actually got the better chances at the end of the day. They sh- they, I think honestly we were lucky to be up one one, not because of uh, not for it to be a draw. Sorry, um, not because of the uh, not because of the own goal. I mean, yes, that was lucky, but but I mean, Edu was on in on goal by himself. On on Pedro just went wide. Um, there was one where the bad touch in the box, give and go, they were in heavy touch. I think Rodrigo came out and swept it. Jansen had a great block in, in the box. So it, it was, it, they had the better chances. The XG shows that too. Not that that's everything, but sometimes when it meets the eye test, then, then it, you know, it's pretty accurate. In this case, 1.72 to 7.2 is what MLS has. And I think that's, that's what the match looked like for the most part. We, um, we we have a situation where we, we just can't fit our um, our three DPS. This club has never pulled three DPS that made sense together. We haven't had three good DPS at the same time. Not that these three pl- players are bad, but I just I don't know how we fit Duncan Muriel Baku Ojeda that uh, on the pitch while trying to accommodate Nico, who Papi always wants an old Uruguayan pulling the strings. And then, and then Angulo with his ability to track back and play defense with the way the way people counter on us, he was very good at that in this match. Um, so I don't know how this all fits. So it's just very frustrating because what you saw is a lot of congestion. If you look at the heat map, Derek did a good job of pointing this out. If you look at the heat map, there, there's just cluster of attackers. And then the second half, we changed things up. We actually went Faku on the left to keep the width. Dagger is almost always the width, the width on the right. And then we put Angulo on the right and um, Muriel right under Duncan really tight, you know, like a very, very narrow front three, um, so to speak. So it, that that kind of worked. But, you know, Angulo in the final third is just not clinical. Doesn't, doesn't really don't really do a good job. And, um, and we, just, we just don't know how to play off each other, make things work. Faku this year quietly has had – no assist or goals, and he, he it seems like Moriel is going to be the main guy who's going to attract the ball in dangerous places. So that's leaving Faku with the secondary role. He's not a guy who's going to run at people. I've been saying this the whole time he's been here. He's not a guy who runs at people, beats them up the dribble. He's a guy who plays give and goes, plays off of other people. It's just not gelling. We didn't look like a threat. We looked. It was very frustrating. Um, a lot of questions. I'll, I'll leave it there. I've already gone long enough. All right, Mike, what are your thoughts on the game? What do you feel I mean, could have gotten better? What, 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 just give me your thoughts. I'm just, I'm just, I have nothing. Just give me your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And it's as far as like my thoughts right now, I only have one, one word, and that's to describe the attack and that it's just, it's listless. The, it, it, look, there's no cohesion. There's, there, there's a minimal ideas. Um, Eddie has mentioned it multiple times and brought it up tonight again that we've never really three DPs be good together at the same time. And right now we're six games into the season, zero goals and one assist. You know, like that's not a number that we can look at and be like, this is what we want. You know, um, we're tied for. Uh, fourth lowest in the league right now in goals scored, you know? And it's one of those things that when you look at it, it kind of shows, you know, we have no idea what we're doing. Um, and it's, it's just, it's at a point of frustration now. Um, I, I felt that the realistically a draw was a deserved result in this game. Um, I don't think that we deserve to win. Uh, I but I really don't think that outside of the penalty that Red Bull really did too much to deserve much more either. Um, so it, it feels like a justified result. It feels like both teams kind of played to this outcome and that was the expectation. Um, I'm just upset at this point with the team because we all went, came in with such high expectations. I know, JJ, you're omitted from that. Uh, you, you covered, you, you covered your own backside with your predictions, but everyone else and, and people around the league all had incredibly high, 
uh, expectations for for the team. But at this point, I, I dude, I just don't I don't understand what we're doing. I don't understand Muriel's role. I don't understand what we're doing with him. I don't understand, um, you know, how we were able to create as many chances as we did, you know, last year in transition. And now we're trying to be something that we're not. Like I just I I don't get it. Uh, the only thing that I will say was a, a positive is, you know, with, with Cesar getting back on the field, felt like that had an impact on the team. Um, uh, he was a good unit uh, passing and distributing the ball um, in, in some more attacking areas. Um, he was 21 so, to 22 oh, when he came on for passing. Exactly. Yeah. And he was only on for not even 15 minutes, I think, something like that. It, was, it, was, it wasn't a high amount of time. Um, so uh, the passing that Cesar brought into the game, I think was something that was incredibly positive. Um, and hopefully the fact that now we have an elongated break, that's something that's going to help a little, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of just at a loss at this point because I'm just so, so damn frustrated, um, with where this team is at compared to where we all expect it to be. Like this isn't the team that I feel like any of us watched last year. And we were, you know, kind of fed that the team was only getting better. So I'm just, I'm lost. Well, let me help you with your lostness here. All right. Uh, Bring my my atlas. Give me the map. Let me, let me, let me go right here real quick. First of all, imagine, I'm I'm just going to go with a couple of things. Duncan McGuire. Imagine if he left to England, right? Who would be our uh, forward? Jack Lynn. Ramiro. Jack Lynn. Ramiro, the missing in action, missing person, uh, Ramiro Enrique. Um, we would have probably signed Luis Muriel still, but we would probably have him as the starter, as the, the, the center forward. So then you put yourself, who is your number 10? So you go from a 30, what, 34-year-old uh, Mauricio Pereira, to an older Nico Lodero, who should be a locker room guy and should be, to me, Nico should be, even though he's working his butt off, don't get me wrong, he's working his butt off. He's out there running and hustling a lot. Okay. But he's a bench guy. He's a guy that should come off the bench. So now who, who would be our number 10? Facundo, right? Or should it be Martin Ojeda? To me, I would put Martin Ojeda. Put Facundo on the right side, Ivan and Gulo on the left. Then you, you're you're basically your center defensive mids, Wilder, Cartagena, and Cesar Araujo. And then you have Dagger Dan. This is your, your prime lineup. Now, I'm hearing stuff that, well, Cartagena traveled, you know, he came in and he traveled and he was playing on the, uh, the national team for Peru. Uh, hello, he was playing in the Dominican Republic. They were playing in Peru. Okay. Why is Facundo Torres starting when he just came from Uruguay, was playing bigger games against what he played against the Bosque? I think it was the Bosque region that he had played against. And he was on the, the t- two teams that played against, uh, was it Spain? I think it was. They were in Spain playing. And I don't know who the other team was. I don't know who, who. they played two, three games basically during that time. But he started. Country and Ivory Coast, I believe. Is who oh, yeah, Ivory right. Coast. But he has started. But he started the game. Why couldn't Wilder not start the game? So we're paying for this guy to come. Well, sorry, buddy. You just came and played from Peru. We're going to put you on the bench. I don't care who you are. We're paying for you to play. We're paying for you for us to win games. It's an honor to have you play for the national team, but you're getting paid by Orlando city. If I need you to play, you're going to play. Listen, all these international players that just played in for Georgia versus Greece to try to make it to the Euro this weekend, they were playing, you know, in, in the U S national they're... team they had players come from Europe and they're back playing in Europe. Why, why could, isn't Wilder playing? Instead, we got Kyle Smith. Instead, we got Kyle Smith. Then we have Nico playing a little bit more of a center defensive mid. Luis Muriel's playing the 10. This whole lineup thing, 
and him saying that we're trying, dude, we're in the seventh, sixth game already of the season. I think trying is over. You should have done this in preseason. You had all this time in preseason to work, okay? This out. And and guess what? You've already cost us the Champions Cup. We're no longer in it. All right? We're so far bottom on the ground. Supporter Shield's gone. If we make the playoffs, hey, we're going to finish 6th, 7th, 8th, or ninth. Um, If we make even the playoffs. Dude. You don't you don't do this during the season, and and I'm hearing people say, "Oh, it's early in the season. Look at us last year." Yeah, look at us last year. We had a motivated Duncan McGuire that wanted to get out of here. Now he knows that he can go anywhere because his agent's probably going to get him anywhere he wants. Probably can get him into Europe, even if it's in Ireland, in the Ireland Premier League. He's going to go to Europe somehow in the summer, you know. And then your DP. Martin Ojeda on the bench, and your Facundo's not playing, correct? So I, I'm frustrated. This is why I'm poppy out. I, I've gotten to the point. It's like, guys, it, it's it's the same thing over and over. He got us to this point. He's not going to get us anywhere else. What were you saying, Eddie? That uh, speaking to the, the international players, uh, whatever Gio Marcus, Sakamakis, he scored a brace after playing for Greece in the final. I mean, he, I don't know how much he played, but he was there. At the end, in uh, you know, Pens, he he bricked the penalty to, to cause Greece the Euros, basically. But he was he was there, and he came all the way from there to to play and get a brace for Atlanta this weekend, for example. And and Wilder and look, I just don't buy that they came from from um, international when we have a bye week after this week. Okay, so Wilder was tired. If Cesar can go, if Kyle was the so great at defensive mid, and I, I get like he played fine against Atlanta, uh, Austin, and he wants to reward his surrogate gringo son. You know, I get it. You know, but at the same time, Wilder's the better player here. Last year, his inclusion changed our season, and and even if he's a little spent, you could get 45, 60 minutes from him. We have ten days of recovery time for him to to get back going. So I just didn't I didn't get that and. And Nico's playing more, in my opinion, because because of the injuries. But at this point, when everyone's back, he, he should not be playing this often. He should not be such a key thing. We, we got to figure out how to get our best best players on the pitch. And um, you know, at this point, I like to see. I still think with time, Oriel Duncan can work together well. But if if not, I would rather prepare for life after Duncan. You know. Um, and uh, get Moriel the majority of the starts and whatever. You know, I don't care about selling people on their money. The Wolves don't need money. Duncan's three, $4 million maybe isn't going to make a dent. They have that in their couches. And uh, so we don't need to, like, force Duncan to play to keep his sell on value high. That's just them not refusing to spend. We don't really need that. And, it's, um, and, and so at this point, I, I want to see what we have in Moriel as, as the nine. And then maybe Faku being central or Ojeda being there can can you know bring some of that that cohesion back or whatnot or or if not then then yeah I mean Faku hasn't deserved to uh, to just have a locked in spot Ojeda's played better this year even I mean Ojeda hasn't produced heat I mean yeah the output it, it, he's creating but the output hasn't been there either I mean there's no goals I think one assist uh, but but you can see what he's trying to do more so maybe Faku just needs to come off the bench get a goal and. And uh, get it going from there. But yeah, I don't understand why Wilder didn't play for somebody at all. I understand why Kyle's in midfield over Dagger Dan. Dagger Dan's never played as, as a six. Kyle can really do one thing well, which is which is defend. And when he's uh, he, when he's doing one touch, but he's fine. He's clean. When he tries to dribble people or attack, is when he's more of a liability. So I get that part of it. Mean, a lot of fan bases up kind of freaked out about why is uh, Kyle playing there. I get it personally. But it, that's also a testament to Felipe, how washed he is. Like the fact that 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 Oscar thinks that Kyle Smith out of position and Nico Lodero out of position are more likely or more useful as starters than Felipe is a testament to what they think of Felipe. And I said it all offseason, we need to get another midfielder. Because after Wilder and Cesar get suspended going international duty, or God forbid get hurt, then we are. We don't really have any real option. The drop off is tremendous from them to Felipe. And then this other kid who's had a couple of moments that are okay, but you, you can't 
throw him in against Red Bulls in their midfield. And and people are hoping this rookie comes through. And then after that, you were playing people out of position. So yeah, I think that that was an oversight to not add a midfield. And I think it's it showed in this recent run. Mike, I have a question for you. And you can then go on with whatever you want to say. But Sure. Uh, we have a team that's very offensive-minded, right? Yvonne Angulo, Duncan McGuire, Luis Muriel, Nico Ladero. Facundo Torres, right there you have, what, five players. Um, And put uh, Dagger Dan. I'll give Dagger Dan because he's more of a uh, midfielder guy. He's actually more of a right wing, uh, up front guy. Yeah, Yeah, wing back. And then Rafa Santos likes to go up a lot too to cross the ball and everything. So you have an offensive-minded team that this coach puts out there. But at the same time, he wants them to play all defense. Why is that? You got let these guys play. Let them play their style of play. It's offense. They're offensive. Why are we having Angulo coming all the way back to the other side? We have Ladero playing at his center defensive mid when he's more of an attacking a midfielder. And I mean, I just I don't understand these tactics that he's doing. I don't understand, you know. Kyle Smith, I get your point, Eddie, but Wilder should have played this game. Fine. He played Austin. We had international break, people. I understand that. You play your best team. You don't put out, well, Kyle played great against Austin. Let me put him out again. No. You put Wilder in. I don't care if he just came from the Dominican Republic, Peru, or wherever. Other teams are playing their best team players. We put him in. Move in, Nico. Put in Felipe. I don't know what's going on with Felipe. I think Felipe is way better than Kyle Smith, to be honest with you. Okay? That's just my opinion. I know some people might have a disagree, but that's my opinion. You have Felipe and Wilder, okay, as your center defensive mid. Put Nico where Muriel is, okay, uh, for this. Then you could move, technically make a false nine for Muriel, and even put him because Facundo was, like I said, was running around like a freaking dog following Muriel and trying to get the ball and bench Facundo and keep or take Angulo out and put Facundo in. What either or. I just feel like he, he, he's done this with Kara, a guy that really doesn't play defense. Here, come back, run. He did it with Nani. Remember, we always said Nani tracks back all the way back to play defense. These guys, then what did they? What, what, he's in, in acting in their head. You got to play defense. You got to play defense. When they go to the play of the offense, they're running back. Their legs and they are lose tired. the ball because it, when, it, it makes you tired. Yeah, when you're and chasing you start, the ball on defense, your your legs are tired, yeah. and you, you, you're, what happens then is your your counterattack is your your touches aren't clean. You rush to pass because your legs are tired chasing. So, Mike, your thoughts on what I just said, and then your thoughts on whatever else you want to put in. Um, hold on one. There we go. Sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, my thoughts, uh, very long winded way for you to get to me to answer the question. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) It's all good. Um, no clue. No clue. Um, I, I don't, it's one of those things we, we've, we've invested so much in our attack. Like, it was one of those things when we brought in Nico, it was made a big deal that we were bringing him in on a non-DP deal. Which realistically is going to bring the implication, and we'll probably find out when salaries get released in the next month or so, that he's probably on a high TAM contract. We're paying Moriel probably $3.5 million a year. Um, we paid a transfer fee to keep Angulo here. We paid a transfer fee to bring in Enrique to bring in Ojeda, to bring in Facundo Torres was a record transfer fee. We have all these pay- players that we've we, we've paid a lot of money for them to be here. And, and we're just... It's frustrating because I understand the importance of defense. I'm not going to try and discount that. Um, obviously, playing defense and tracking back is important. But we're spending so much time doing that that I feel like there's just... There, there, the the actual product in attack right now is just non-existent. 
you know, like the, it's, and I know it's partially just the way that Poppy likes to play. He's a very pragmatic coach. We all know that he is very, very pragmatic in the style that he manages the fact that if we play to minimize mistakes, we can win the game. But right now we're playing to minimize mistakes while still making a lot of mistakes. And we're not turning, we're, we're not taking anyone else's mistakes and turning them into goals realistically um i don't know if it's just you know un- unfortunate of our opponents haven't been making a lot of mistakes but realistically we've been making a ton of mistakes and they're capitalizing and we're not so um i don't know if i even answered your question realistically but it's one of those things that uh, it's it's frustrating man there's a lot of money into the attack of this team this team is not attacking oriented poppy has never been an attacking oriented coach and at the point, it looks like, you know, a lot of us were excited based off of last year. Last year was the anomaly. This team can't score 55 goals in a season. That's not what this team is going to do. Um, we all thought that we'd be able to score more and that things would be better. It looks like, no, last year was the bogey year. That's not who we are. That's not who we are going to be. And um, I just... I'm uh, I'm upset. I'm annoyed. And, it's a and, barrage. Um, and if you look at him, they said the Moriel Oscar said that they were surprised they could get him. I wonder if he, they weren't able to get him. What was the plan? Were they not going to 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 bring in another DP? Because that seems like that seems like that was going to be the case. And then you know Duncan wanted getting the offer, wanted to leave, kind of came as as a surprise. So we we could have came in here with. Even less, you know, at some point, Mariel's going to come good, in my opinion. His quality is evident. Um, no one's going to blow up as a striker in this offense just because it's just an Oscars offense. And I, you know, beat to death that the most of the strikers ever scored is in the low teens. You know, I think Duncan broke it with 13 last year. It was 12 for a decade. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, that's just what's going to happen because you're isolated. Um, but so it, it's, it's crazy that, that we weren't going to bring in more. Yeah, at the same time, but but what what the problem I'm seeing is just I feel like last year a lot of transitionary goals Duncan finishing was exemplary. It's hard to duplicate that, and um, and then now everyone's got this off season to tape on us. Um, the team started playing the mid block on us and making it a little harder at the end. I mean Columbus really dominated that match against us until we went all gung so at the end through the kitchen sink. But other than that, they really just dominated the match. We, we were we were back to our old self, chasing the ball, chasing the ball, sloppy counterattacks and, uh, and and all that. And then what you're going to see is, oh, we just need to finish and be more political in the final third. But it, it is difficult to do that when you have to defend as much. You, you know, some teams can do it, but we're kind of in between that and possession and possessing the ball and trying to be play little triangles on the side. But the teams are are up there. They know what we're doing, and they just you just end up sending crosses in, cross, 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 cross. And at this point, they're just funneling us to the left. Our left side bias is so incredible, and um, and it's just not it, it's not productive. I, I don't know. Um, we had 17 shots this last game, I believe, but um, 14, 14, uh, 14 shots, 14 and shots, three. 14 sh- two on sh- target, and they you know, and a lot of shots were from outside the box. They just were so, and because the teams were able to to, to stay compact, and I, I I get why you want wingers wingers need to track back. Everyone needs to put in a shift on both sides, but uh, our wingers play like wing backs, and sometimes you know people get off a window. But this match, we barely got the ball to, to him. We barely got the ball. We putting it through the midfield for thirty minutes, and sometimes he, you know he he's playing wing back, and uh, and then they get it to him, and then there's there's two people, and what do you what do you expect the guy to do? So it's, and then when we're in our half in possession, we we're, we don't have anyone making runs in behind the low blocks or the mid blocks we're facing. Or by the time we're in there, the third, it's the low block. No one's making runs in behind. There's no through balls. There's no slip in behinds for a pullback. That's how you well, beat. Well, that's, how, that's how you beat low blocks. You got You got to have an extra man in that like pocket. Watch Spurs are good at this. Arsenal faces low blocks. Man City. You got to have that person in between. The center back and the fullbacks, an extra person in there make a run. And no one does it. Everyone just kind of interchanges at the top of the box and nothing really happens, you know? The balls are going through, Eddie. The balls are going through. Muriel is getting the balls to where they're supposed to be. 
our players aren't there. There's a couple yes. balls that he gave to Duncan. Duncan was slow. If yeah, he, he was, he was late to run, it. More touch. Yeah. Uh, the the Muriel is actually making plays and trying his best to get the ball. It's yeah. the other players that aren't getting there. They're running late. They're they're not making. And then you got crosses. This is what aggravates me. And thank goodness Jack Lynn was there on the other one against Austin. We crossed the ball. Nobody's on that backside of that post. Yeah, that's why. Or you're or, or, or you have or you have six defenders around Duncan McGuire. Hello, it, it yeah. ain't gonna happen. You right, know right. Like, w- w- this is this is like the Scott Sutter to Don Dwyer, like crossed into three people, and people get people get excited because oh, a cross and crosses look pretty, but crosses don't score goals a lot, and and we only have one big guy, Murillo. Yes, he can, he can, he sh- maybe he could go in the box more, but he, he's there. He, he's being asked to be like a facilitator and create stuff at the top. Other than that, we have tiny, we have a tiny uh, Uruguayan, uh, tiny Colombian, and then occasionally. You know, a tiny, another Uruguayan, and then it's a, a kind of small Argentinian. None of those guys are aerial threats. So why are we, why are we going? Why are we so aerial based? It's a good point. Why? All right, let's. Uh, yeah, I on. mean, like Duncan. I would say Duncan's kind of good. Like he's a good target man, and can Jack Lynn. But still, even then, neither one of them are like a sultan of size. Like they're not. Yeah. They're not. <laughs> they're not gonna break the house down. You know. Yeah, Jacqueline's not going to jump over everyone. And, yeah, we got some big guys. Brekolo scored a couple goals in Norway. and He'll get settled. We'll get a set piece. But Jensen, Jensen's not good in the air on offense or defense. Because Jensen, no. I don't think he scored a single-headed goal since he's been here. He scored goals go off back. corners, but I don't think so. He scored goals off of corners, but it's been rebounds he put away. But in the air, like Antonio Carlos used to do. I don't think he's done it. I think Rodrigo maybe has one. Or he, Rodrigo usually scores a scruffy goal. And, you know, he he nuts he kicks someone in the nuts and they're like while wow, you know with his left foot or while scoring with the right foot or something. We, we we get he gets a scruffy goal. It's not like you know we got these elaborate set pieces and the guy's clear and he heads it in. We just don't have that in the toolbox. We don't. I would love a set piece coach and have strategy. We talked about then after dark in swinger in swinger in swinger, but uh, but we don't. So we we got a freaking score from somehow. I don't know. In 169 games, Robin Janssen, for playing for Orlando City, has scored five goals. Yeah, you check. I don't think a single one was a header. I don't think it's a header. I think it's those screeching. One was a one or two free kicks because I remember he, he can do free kicks because he has a good shot at a free kick. Most and of his I goals, if I remember correctly, came during the COVID year, so I'd have to kind of go back and take a look at that. I think he scored three during that time, so uh, I'd have to go back and see. I don't remember the, the the nature of them. Even even if we have um, big guys, other people have big guys too, you know? Yeah. Good point. All right, guys. Let's go to stock up, stock down. Uh, stock up, stock down. Mike, I'm going to go with you first. Who's your stock up and who's your stock down? I mean, uh, stock up, I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to give it to Cesar just for him being healthy. And getting back on the field and seeing what kind of a impact his passing was able to make. Um, and for stock down, like I feel like I could go a couple different ways here. Um, but I am going to go with, uh, uh, I'm just going to go with Kyle Smith, man. Like many times during this game, uh, obviously he conceded the penalty because with a shifty player like Lewis Morgan or Dante Van Zier. I think it was Morgan who went down though. You can't leave a foot in like, even if you barely contacted him and he's looking for that contact. If you leave a foot, every quality attacker is looking for contact. If they see that you're hanging a foot out there as a defender, you have to know to be aware for that. And then there was just multiple times where man, he just was either getting beat or like there was twice where he ended up just, Mispossessing a ball on the sideline and just giving up, giving up a, 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 a you know, what would have been, a, you know, giving up a goal kick when we were attacking. Like he could have kept the ball in play, but he mistouched it and it went out. That happened right in front of me like twice. Um, I, I know it seemed like I got involved with like a dust up with a Red Bull player towards the end of the first half. I'm not sure exactly what happened with that. Um, I think it was during the first half, but yeah, um, Lewis Morgan bumped him on the chest and he didn't like it. So he went after 
and uh, I mean, that's hey, something else we'll talk about. <laughs> good thing. Show some heart. You know, I appreciate no, that. No, it's uh, great. It's, but, it's, but, 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 um, the the negatives from him in this game definitely outweigh the the positive of the the show some heart, grit your teeth moment. So, um, uh, I'll go Kyle Smith, and then I'll I'll leave my other ones in my head unless you guys don't say them. So, all righty, Eddie. You're stopped up. You're stocked down. I, I think I know which one's yours, so I'll let you have it, uh, JJ. <laughs> You're stocked down at least. But uh, um, stock up, I'm going to I'm gonna say, um, yeah, I think Cesar and, and Wilder, like the, the double pivot, both of them, I thought when they came on, they were impactful. They, it, I was like, that's a double pivot I remember. Uh, Cesar won the ball high a couple of times. Wilder broke, some, well, broke up some transitions. I thought they uh, – and, and one thing we, we missed with uh, – you don't have Wilder playing. Yeah, he's he's good at spraying those diagonals, right? To create those transitionary moments, he does a good job of that. Um, so I, I uh, I'm glad to see him back. Um, I think Jacqueline got himself in dangerous spot. I mean, he didn't make the back heel, but he he's doing the the near post thing. So like that's something the Wando thing I always talk about. Beat the your defender to the nearest post. He, he does that well. He keeps it simple. He's his upside is limited, but but he's doing simple things, and that's that's helping. So. We'll shout out for that. Um, so um, that was where, those were my stock up, right? The stock stock down. Oh, stock down. I thought Rafael Santos had a bad game. We'll say him. Yeah, that was he had a poor game. Um, we'll probably say him. And Gudo offensively, I know he he got the own goal, but it just I'm just confused with what he's trying to do half the time. But but he tracked back so well. And stop the transitions that I can't give him a stock down. But um, I know if Evan Weston was here, he'd give him a stock down. And, uh, <laughs> and um, so, <laughs> you know, you know, right? Um, I, I think that's that. That's it. That's the one I got. You know, also to the stock down a little bit, you know. You know what? I'm going to let you have this one because I think you might do that one too, JJ. So I'm done. That's in mind. Uh, you'll be surprised by what I have, but my stock up, uh, I got two. I'll do two, and you, everybody's going to hate me for the second one. First one's Luis Muriel. Uh, stock up. The guy, I mean, he's trying his best to do what he can do. He's placing the balls there for the, the players to get. He's playing the 10. He's playing striker. He's coming back to play defense. I mean, this guy has never played this much in his life. In his career at Atalanta, Sevilla, or whoever he played, and he's he's playing, you know. So I give a, I give credit to Luis Muriel because I think, you know, to come into the system, which is totally different. And I'm surprised, and he's taking it and he's doing what he can try. I mean, he, he's getting balls to places where they need to be, but our players aren't there. Um, or they're too late, or they're, they're not understanding that that's what he's going to do. And, yes, it's going to take time to gel, but this is stuff that you should be working on with the players, with Duncan Maguire's and the Facundo Torres's, and, and training and saying, hey, get ready. I'm going to dish that ball right through there, you know. Um, I mean, he's been here for three, four, five games already, and I, I, you should start seeing that gelling going, and you're not seeing it. So I don't know what's going on. You know, a lot of people are bashing Rafael Santos uh, uh, from the last game. To me, I think he did pretty darn well. Um, you would have put Kyle Smith there. He would have gotten outrun by some of those guys, too. Amaya and all them. You know? he, he does. Get, uh, he, gets, he, gets, he, he gets a tough task. Like, he's one-on-one -on -one all the time. People are running at him. Yeah, and nobody, yeah. nobody yeah. you know, when you go to Dagger Dan, you get two guys on when Dagger Dan is over there. So, um you know, he uh, he was 84% on passes, you know, 48 for 57. Um, I mean, to me, he goes up. He, he, he's probably one of the best crossers that we have. Um, the guy can shoot also. I, actually, fair, fair, it was fair. funny because um, he was actually, for a free kick, he was there <laughs> lined up also, which I was like, I would be surprised if he takes it. But he was there. So, I mean. People are bashing this guy. Would you play him? Uh, would you play Kyle Smith over him? No, not at all, because Kyle Smith offensively is not going to 
is not going to help at all. And um, and we obviously rely on crossing. If Kyle Smith could cut on his right, he could cross. But he, he's a guy that you, you press, he's going to not hold on well, in my opinion. And um, if, I'm, if I'm defending Kyle Smith on the left, I just show him to his left. You know, I mean, because he, he, what is he going to do? So, no, I, I think he's going to miss unless, unless you play Kyle Smith, then you gotta you got to play him as, as a third center back and have Dagger higher or into midfield. You know, that's what I would do. I would invert Dagger a little bit more, let Cesar go up, and then have Kyle sit back. If if you need a defensive game, that's what you want to do. If you want to try to score goals, then no. The, the downgrade is it's huge. <laughs> And I want to jump in real quick and just kind of back up your point there a little bit, Eddie, because in, uh, JJ said, you know, would you trust Kyle to be in that position? They wanted to go ahead and try that by going ahead and uh, they wanted to go ahead and try that by, by realistically they benched, they, they, they took Santos out, put him on the bench and put Kyle in that position. And Kyle still got pulled too, because he didn't excel in that position. Um, so I just kind of wanted to like highlight that, they kind of gave Kyle a chance to be like, go into that role, see if you can go ahead and do it for this game. And he still couldn't. I, granted, like not to try and pile in on Kyle too much more because I've done that enough already as it is, but because um, he had a bad game. But it, it, I just kind of wanted to highlight that they did kind of try that a little bit and uh, it didn't really work. Yeah. the bashing that they're getting for um, Santos and everything. All right, so my stock down. Stock down. Oh, man. Who would I go with my stock down? I'm going to go Facundo Torres. (laughs) Facundo Torres. Stock down, that's, I mean, that's basically, he's down to negative. If he was in the stock market, he would have gone bankrupt already in the negative area. But, um, no. Uh, Facundo just looks lost out there, man. He just, he really does. Um, and, and all he has is that left foot. And I think everybody's starting to figure that out. That he, all he has is that push into the left, kick it with your left foot. So he, to me, definitely, um, stocked down. And then Rodrigo in this game, that he gave up that ball. I mean, it was one on one. Pedro Galesi. Luckily, the player. I don't know who it was. If it was Reyes, Manuel. Or, I don't know. Manuel. 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 Yeah, Manuel. the Brazilian. Yeah, uh, who basically just <laughs> took on one on one with uh, Pedro Galesi. I don't know what the heck Rodrigo Schlegel was doing there. And listen, if that would have gone in, that would have been two nil. You know, and who knows what would happen after that? Because now you're pushing every. You definitely got to push everybody up front now, and that means more opportunities for the Red Bulls to come up on counters and everything. So um, definitely Rodrigo with the, 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 whatever he did there. So those are my stocks up stock down. Uh, Mike, you, do you have any more? You said you had it more, but you were going to. Oh yeah. It, yeah. Only one I was going to add was just, uh, we kind of touched on it earlier and I figured one of you might've mentioned it. It's just a stock down for Poppy. Um, player. Yeah. That was going to be, second one. Yeah, that was yeah, gonna be, I knew like, someone was going to have it. Yeah, like player selection. Like uh, again, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Like I, obviously, Cesar coming in off of injury kind of would have expected him to to not play a full game. I mean, if Acuna was able to play a full game, you know, why didn't why 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 is Bercala not against uh, one of the friendlies? He got a start in, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, um, he might have come off the bench, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Uh, if we look at um, Facundo came in and played, but Cartagena. Why is why is he not on the like he could have given 60 minutes rather than just 15, 20. So I don't I'm I'm confused by squad selection and what we're doing. Um so yeah, and Bercalo uh one. Slovenia actually played Portugal uh, in the friendly. And beat Bercalo them. didn't even well, they beat him. Yeah, they beat Portugal. The first loss to <laughs> Roberto Martinez. They beat him 2-0. And uh Bercalo didn't even play in that game. He was on the bench the whole time. So you know, uh, just uh, things that make make you go, hmm, you know. So that's uh, – Eddie, you have anything else to say? I was going to say, that, and there's – we have like 10 days – I mean, how much time do we have before our next match? So it's not roster congestion. I mean, I, I get they traveled and all that stuff. 
but I'm just like, if I'm, I'm going to push it through through this break. Just, hey, let's just get through this. And I think Brocado is nursing something. But I get him more, but I don't get Cartagena at all, personally. I don't get it. All right. He has so, more faith in Kyle than I do. All right. So what's next for Orlando City? Well, we're on a bye. Technically, if we were still in the Champions Cup, we really wouldn't be on a bye because we would be playing Columbus Crew. But instead, it's Tigres playing Columbus Crew. So we ended up, you know, being knocked out. We get a bye um, for this week. And then we go and we play, uh, what is it, DC United in about probably a week and a half, two weeks. Um, 413. Yeah, 413. Uh, 413. Is, it, is that? No, I'm thinking 424. Which, what, what's the, uh, what's your favorite, uh, Alex Brown's favorite date? 420. My bad. 420. <laughs> <laughs> old Alex. Not, not anymore. Not the new Alex. <laughs> no. Not the new Alex. The old Alex. Uh, for, so 413, April 13th, uh, we play DC United up in Audi Field up in uh, Washington, DC. And, uh, so what's next for us? What I mean, now you come fully rested. Um, I'm going to throw this out there to you guys. You come fully rested, and we lose. What goes on with the fan base here in Orlando City? Mike. Oh, man. So the way that I look at it is we were pretty, pretty intense last year with how we felt the first 10 games. Obviously, you got kicked out of Champions Cup, kicked out of Open Cup in that first 10 games last year and had 14 points through 10 games. Right now, we're sitting on five points through six games. Last year, it was eight points through six games. So just to give you an idea where we're at as far as pacing goes. Um, so we're behind where we were at this point last year. We're still out of one competition. Uh, and the other competition that we got booted from last year, we didn't even get a chance to be a part of. Um, and based off of the things from the athletic, it seems like most of the, the chief soccer officers, um, were upset at the decision to just not be a part of it at all. Um, at least the majority, two thirds. So, um, at, at this point, if we go to DC and we pick up an L and everyone's rested and healthy with the exception of uh, Ramiro Enrique, who, you know, still haven't heard back from that milk carton that I put him on. Hopefully we'll get something back soon. Um, we still don't know where he's at, but realistically, everyone else is healthy. We're, you know, can assume that full like, full strength lineup of Gaese and goal, Dagger Dan, Bracalo, Janssen, Santos, Cartagena, uh, Arajo, uh, Ojeda, Faku, Moriel, Angulo, Duncan, whatever you want to do, Ladero, whoever it is, the best team should be on the field for that game. Um, if the best team's on the field for that game and we lose and uh, we continue to look listless and attack, I, I feel like uh, the sentiments on our den after dark are going to start to be louder and more vocal in other areas. Um just because on the Den After Dark, we have a lot of great people like, you know, like Corey and Johnny who come on there. Uh, they're great. And shout out to you guys who are always on there listening and, and volunteering to talk. And Jake, um, you guys Eric, all. Yeah. Un, yeah. And Eric. Yeah. You guys all understand the game and you guys are all frustrated about it, too. And I feel like it's one of those things that, you know, we're at the point now where it's. I don't think anything could get any worse before it gets better. I feel like we're already at this lowest we can get. Um, and so if things are only going to continue to get worse, um, it's going to result in changes having to be made. Um, I don't know that how, how soon that happens. I don't know if that's something that happens like within the next five games, if things go bad, but it, it's, it doesn't look good right now, uh, for a team that just seems like we have no idea how to score, you know? Um, and I know people go ahead and start like harp, harp some of the next level analytics like well look at our xg look at this i'm like the xg is mostly coming from one game you know like our xg against i, I believe it was against minnesota and austin our xgs in those games looked phenomenal but we still lost one of them like i don't care about xg i care about the tape i'm watching the games i'm seeing what chance creation is that's that's the same thing like 
I hate to go ahead and bring this back, but uh, I've been doing – my buddy's got an NFL podcast. Me and him have been doing a lot of draft prep. I don't give a damn watching someone's pro day and seeing how well that guy throws in shorts and a T-shirt. That's not how he throws in a game when he's got a 350-pound defensive tackle in his face. So, like, you can go ahead and show me as much tape about how good someone is in practice. I don't care if I can't see it in the game. And I feel like that's where we're kind of at with a lot of people right now is – Everything we see, it's, everything looks great. Practice is great. Everything's going great. We can't do anything in the game right now. So if we can't, if we don't start seeing this stuff actually translate to a game, more people are going to get frustrated. More people are going to get loud. And D, uh, Dallas, uh, uh, Paul Ariola put out a statement saying, you know, we're really sorry about what the fans that you guys are disappointed in us. We're going to work to make it better. We're going to start, uh, you know, I feel you, like it's going to get to the level. We're going to start you seeing took some of my shout things. out. You took ah, my shout out. I'm sorry, man. You know I'm too. I'm too connected. I'm too. I'm too locked in all the time with everything. Uh, <laughs> but that's what it's going to come down to. Is we're going to start seeing people getting on the players a lot more. Um, and you know, it's never a good time when players have to put out a statement saying that we're sorry that we disappointed the fans. But it feels like that's been a, where we're heading right now. So, Eddie. What's next? What are your thoughts of what's going to happen next? You know, if we lose, if we win, what what's next for Orlando City? I think this break came at a perfect time because we don't seem like we have a clear, cohesive vision. I know, Mike, you were excited about Mr. Martin from OCB coming on to help with the offense. I don't know if it's he hasn't had an impact or his ideas suck, but it hasn't made any, you know, we haven't seen an increase in offense. I, I wasn't with you. I'm not critiquing you. I, I was just saying that no, you, no. Were, you were the biggest on it. Yeah. Because um, those two people did, you know, they, they did anything they scored. And um, what, what I want to see in this break, which, like I said, came at a perfect time, is for them to decide on a formation in the lineup. Right? Honestly, I, I said it last year. We, we started off trying to play pretty and do stuff. That's just not Oscar is. I, w- I think we just need it. Just we just need to fully get an identity. Just fully commit to terrorism, haram ball, as they call it, and just own who we are. It'd be tough to be. Be compact, counterattack, and that's it. We're not anything else. We we put it on offense, and that that's it. Um, you know, but yeah, you know, Fagundo and Gul are basically wing backs on the uh, half the game, and. Uh, Whatever, man. Let's just just get in transition. Let let's go. Atalanta, Muriel, that that team. You know, they they play with a back three, and they they had wide wing backs, and they 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 were more of the front full front foot forward kind of teams for a while until recently. So he knows how to play that way, and uh, do you know? And uh, Duncan showed effectiveness playing this way too. And uh, I just think we need to just pick something, try to go at it. After this break, we cannot make any excuses about gelling about finding our identity, about trying lineups. You have two weeks to sort that out. We have an advantage. Some teams are playing through this. We are not. Um, so let's take full advantage of it. Because if we come out and D.C., Benteke killed us last year. The D.C., we couldn't beat them last year. They, they got us twice. Um, they, they've been a bit of a bogey team you now. And um, um, I think if we don't win against them, it's going to be crazy. And look, the, the norm in, in soccer – is football is fans going after teams. Now, there's a way to do it. You don't go personally insulting, that kind of stuff. But Paul Riola had to make a statement you're talking about, Mike, in Dallas, and that was because they were getting on their case. So it's normal. That's the way the world works in football. This is an American thing to to, to not be, you know, to, to be like, no, you did your best. It's okay. Don't worry about it. And we're here I'll to get support. you orange slices. Yeah, support is saying, dang, you know what? You know, we want more. This this badge, this team, this club, this city means means a lot to us. I need to see something happen here. And uh this is gonna be a key point. This this the way we come out of this break is gonna define our season, in my opinion. We're gonna come out, all right, that's the one to see I remember from last year, or 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 we're gonna come out and, and come out flat like we've been out these last these these few matches. So for me, I, Oscar, just in, embrace who you are. You know, Haram, it's, it's Haram season, you know. The terrorist soccer, it's, it's, it's for here to stay. I don't care if it's pretty. I want results. I don't think, I don't, frankly, I don't think Oscar, you do pretty well. And um, when it comes to uh, to the team, 
I think, you know, even though Dallas were a counter punch, they, they called it vertical counter attacks and through balls from RDS, et cetera. It was never slicing people up mid and low blocks. We, we, this is how we're being defended. Now we got to figure out how to, how to be offensive against the way we're being defended. So, um, and if we don't figure it out during this break, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm not going to get into Papi out because I, I said it on Dan After Dak, the Wills I have accepted mediocrity for years in their football team. They're, they're Vikings, so I don't think they, they're going to let go of Oscar into your contract. But um, uh, but I'm going to be – my uh, expectations are already lower. They're going to be lower, and it's going to be heartbreaking to me, to be honest. Uh, have the Wolves uh, – they fired Dennis Green, didn't they, not, when he was there with the Vikings? Oh, I guess, but, I mean, Zimmer and, and was – Mike Tice also. Eventually. But how long was Zimmer there? And Kirk Cousins, you know? Yeah, they, 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 to me that that's they, that translates directly to to what this fan base is fine with being getting a playoff game fifth six oh we're in the playoffs you know we weren't in the playoffs you remember when we weren't in the playoffs and now we're in the playoffs right that that's that's what the Vikings are oh we weren't in the playoffs the Vikings have never been to Super Bowl I think the only franchise um, except maybe Detroit Lions who've never been to Super no, Bowl no they right? the Vikings have, been to a Super, the, Vikings, the Vikings have been, to a Super been Bowl. yeah back in oh, the they went uh, to one. oh like Vince like Lombardi yeah. days. Oh, back then. What was it even? Yeah, like Super Bowl two or something, you know, back then. So, so back in the Wil- Wilshire, were like babies in New Jersey at the time. So it has nothing to do with them. They you got facilities and all that kind of stuff. But my point is, is this, you know, it, I've said it. My ideal owner is kind of like the LAFC guy. He's a local guy. doesn't care if he makes money. And he, he'll spend. And LAFC has got results because of that. And, uh, and we, we have, that's not what we have here. It doesn't mean they haven't done some positive. I'm just saying that that the fact that we we don't spend big on trenches and big on salary, we do one or the other, is is a testament to, to maybe that that ambition isn't what people thought it would be. All right. So my what's next? This is uh, my what's next. I'm kind of with Eddie here. You have two weeks to figure out what you want to do, Oscar. Um, you have two weeks to figure out your formation. You have two weeks to figure out what players you're going to start and try to keep it in that. I know they need some rest later on or whatever, but that should be one game and a game that should be easier. The gelling should be done. And I want to hear fans to stop. I want fans to stop saying, well, look at last year. Well, I'm looking at last year. Last year was last year. It seems like it was a mirage. You know, when you go out in the desert and you're you're so, oh, there's water over there. That was last year. That was our season last year. Because I don't know what it is this year. This year, it's just oh goodness. We're 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 basically we're we're dried up. We're dried up on goals. We're we're dried up on everything. Um, but you have two weeks, Oscar. I'm still poppy out. And I'll be poppy out until we start getting wins again, like we did last year, and I'll eat my words. Um, but I don't see it happening this year. I don't. Um, we're too far down. Uh, it, it's just I, I, there's something wrong with this team. We can't score. I feel like everybody wants to score on this team, and that's the problem. Um Muriel's getting those passes in Facundo. And then the other thing is, is they, they don't shoot. Like there's times that they could have the opportunity to shoot, shoot the darn ball. So then, then they pull those guys out of the box that are just sitting there, you know, waiting for you guys to come in and walk in with the ball, shoot, you know, so then we can make runs, we can do things, but this is all coaching that Poppy should tell them, you know, but I, I just, <laughs> Uh, it's frustrating to see all those things. Go ahead, Mike. It feels like uh, for this two weeks, it feels like the team needs to go to like some kind of disciplinary camp retreat as a group. Like, you know, they used to say like the two two brothers who don't get along together or whatever, they put them in a big oversized shirt saying this is our get along with each other shirt. I feel like that's what this team needs, especially the attack. This is what the, this is our attack together t-shirts that way they learn how to operate as a unit rather than just stand and occupy each other's space. Um, Like you look at one of the things we looked at was like the pass map and the pass map basically showed 
Faku, Angulo, Moriel, and Duncan almost all wearing, in the exact same space. They're wearing like, get along shirts. They're literally like the past map looked like they're wearing a get along shirts. They're stuck in yeah, the same shirt. exactly. They're all <laughs> occupying the same damn space. Like that's the thing. Like I'm, I, I, you need to understand how to work with each other within the system, not work with how you think your role is supposed to be. So. I don't know if we need to go ahead and like, since they tore down the church outside the stadium, I don't know if we need to go sage it or like if they need to go ahead and have some kind of wellness retreat to get their minds right, align their chakras together, you know, whatever they need to do. Uh, But boys need something and hopefully two weeks is enough time for them to figure it out. And then the other thing that I have to say, there's two more things I have to say. Oh boy. You guys are going to let me uh, go on this one. Robin, uh, Mike, you had talked about Kyle Smith and the Lewis Morgan thing. Instead of being a, instead of, of being a captain and pulling them away, he gets in the middle of it too, starts pushing, and then starts arguing. That's not a captain. Your players are seeing it. Your compadres are seeing it, man. That's why they're getting yellow cards for dissent and all this stuff, man. That's something Mauricio last year would do would pull them away get away get away get away get away stop 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 robin he's going into it too yeah i know you want to stick up for your brother but you're the captain of the team okay pedro had to come out of goal to break them up break robin and, and kyle smith and all them and, come on and robin. English, so it wasn't the problem this time yeah so come on man you're the captain if you're going to be the captain you're going to wear that armband Let's a little bit more discipline on your side there, uh, 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 Robin. A li- little bit more discipline. Um, and then my last thing uh, that I have to say, as you guys noticed, that I put some stuff out on Twitter this weekend. Yeah, it's frustration. We all get frustrated, of course. And as a as an Orlando City fan, I am. I feel like the journalism. And the beat writers of Orlando City are not asking the questions that need to be asked. But it's not just Orlando City. From when I put that out on uh, Easter Sunday, I've gotten people saying that the Seattle Sounders are doing the same thing, the the beat writers. New York FC, I've gotten people from NYCFC. So it is not just an Orlando City thing. So I'm thinking this is more of an MLS thing. Okay. Which, yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, real quick. I was going to say, one in the anonymous GM survey that they did on the Athletic, one of the GMs said that really it's that they, they wish the commentators were more honest. And Hercules going to say, well, watch what you're, you know, be careful what you're asking for. But they say that they feel like, you know, the MLS show and everything is is just kind of milk toast in regards to the criticism, you know. And it just seems to be a league wide thing where, can ask you these kind of and you can't really ask these binding questions and remember they they sent a memo out to not mention the scab referees all of that stuff so you know when you when you get when you you some people are afraid to to bite the hand that fed them and and that there was that lady that reported that they got rid of at some other place i don't know the backstory maybe she deserved it cincinnati but yeah, cincinnati yes yeah. cincinnati maybe she deserved it or not but but it just you know I, I haven't watched a press conference in five years because there's nothing to come from them. I might read up the write up what my grandma will put up or something, or right, what what our summary is. But there's nothing in a press conference that you're going to gain from. Period. You know, so it's just it's not it's not it, worth it's it. Just and a, and it's, we don't know if Enrique Ramiro's dead or if he's not dead or what what Caesar's injury was or whatever because it's just. MLS, I, I blame MLS. I'm not calling anyone out, but yeah. I think no, I'm, right. I'm not. I, I'm just. It's just German journalism. Now, if you go, you know, to England, you got the Sun, the Telegraph, the Guardian, and those those guys will just Sky News. They'll just go in there and they'll tear up and ask, you know, questions. And yeah, if the coach doesn't want to answer it, he does it, and that's why they get mad and they say things. You know, you go to England or to Spain, Marca. You got all these, you know. Um, all these newspapers and everything, they'll go in and they'll ask strict questions to to these coaches and players. And yeah, the coaches and players will get mad and everything. But here it's just, and I'm not bashing the Gramajos. I'm not bashing, you know, any of those guys that are there. Um, 
Mike and uh, other guys. I'm not bashing none of them. It's just in general. Ask some tougher questions. I don't want to care about. So Kyle Smith uh, played. Do you, you think he played good? And the coach is going to be like, yeah, I think he played great. I, I That's because I put him there. Of course he played great. You know, ask him the tougher questions, you know, it, and, and don't be scared. If you want to make it in the world of journalism and go out and be somebody bigger, look at Paul Tenario and me and Paul, I mean, you can, Eddie can vouch for this. We don't see eye to eye, but I respect the guy because what he would ask questions. And sometimes he would ask questions that were inappropriate, and sometimes he would ask questions that were backing up the, the organization. But he would ask questions. And look where he's at now, the athletic. You know, he's, he's one of the top soccer guys in the U.S., you know. So sometimes asking questions ain't going to hurt you. It might even help you in the long run to get to bigger and better places. It, it, could, it could be just natural, too, because the U.S. men's national team people say the same thing. You know, it's like they're at, you know the same when it comes to that. So I, I don't know what it I mean. Is. Look at the look look at the New York. You know the the Giants, the Jets. You know Boston Red Sox, the Boston Bruins. You know the Boston Celtics. Those guys, those reporters, man, they get mad at them. The the players, you know, and everything. They'll bash him on the New York uh, Post. You know right. that the Giants were horrible or something. <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm a, so, I'm a big, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm a big Giants guy. So, like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to bash on you, but, but I'm no, just no, saying, no, no, you know no, I'm just saying, you're 100, you're 100 percent right when it comes to the, the, the relationships that they have. Like, there's, there's, there's players who they'll, they'll talk to, they'll talk to Art Stapleton from NewJersey.com, but if Pat Leonard from the New York Daily News comes in, yeah. they, they're, they're giving him, uh. Two two birds on their way out, you know. Like yeah. they don't want well, to talk uh, to uh, and uh, look at uh, Salah from the Jets. You know, he's got receipts from these reporters or things like that. That's what I like to see. P push it because us fans, we want to know what's going on. We pay our money to go to these Orlando City games. We pay our season tickets for this. I'll go to Disney World. You know, mm -hmm. if this is all just for entertainment, I'll go buy my season pass at Disney World. You know. But no, I, I'm. This is Orlando City. This is a professional team. These are professional players, and these are professional coaches. The reporters need to ask him the question, and and I'm going to say right now, hey, listen, Orlando City, if you want to give me press passes, feel free. I'll go in there. At the end of the game, I want to stay in my seat where I sit. But at the end of the game, I'll go in there and I'll ask questions and I'll bring it right here to the Orlando Lions did. But they won't give it to me because they're scared. They're scared that. I will ask them these questions that I did on Twitter and they won't have a response for them. So sorry for my rant, but I had to, to had to say it. And so. to, to be fair, when they do that, those events where like you, you meet Poppy or whatever, like they did this year, they, you could ask those tough questions. People ask those tough questions and Oscar's not afraid to answer. He'll answer them, but it's just, it's just how, how it is. So I don't know what it is, but I want to talk about you talking about, those. Oh, I need yeah. to get invited I, to this. No, I me mean, neither. Klingon gets invited, and I'm a plus one, but I, I don't know get it. Hey, and, and no, that one was open to also, everyone, I think, this year. That with, with those two, it's also easier to, you know, you, you don't have the hard questions yet because the season hasn't started yet. So, <laughs> right. Also, also, too, you're supposed to keep what's in there in there, too. So it's not out um, uh, as well. It's not like public. Um, the I want to talk about the shooting thing. Like in, in basketball, when, when a team's playing you, they're packing in the paint. If you shoot from the outside, they have to step out to defend you. What that does is create lanes. The same thing happens in football. If you shoot from the outside and can score, if you get it on frame, you get rebounds, you get putbacks, you get tap-ins, you get rebound goals, and now they have to come out and defend you, and then lanes come open up. So, yes. And also, too, if we're not going to score in with a block and we're going to get a bunch of corners, then let's work on them. I don't know if we get a little set-piece set coach like everyone does nowadays or – or something else. If you if you have it on the left side of the goal, have a right hander, a right footed guy kicking an in swinger. Dagger Dan would be good. Kyle Smith plays all the time. Have him do it. And then if it's on the left, then I prefer Martin Ojeda or Faku to do it. But in swingers, um, they do work better than out swingers. Um, the goal corners aren't going to score a lot anyways. But if, we, if we're not going to score from the run of play, at least 
at least let's get our head on some corners because it's not that we we suck at them short or long we're, we're not good at them we rarely get our head on it and cause a threat you know and uh, the one that that um it rarely really happens our, our best chances to score off of corners are when martin ojeda tries an olympico which two out of you know two of the last three home matches he's almost scored on on Oh, hopefully he gets one by the end of this year or before summer, before he leaves. Um, all right, shout outs real quick. Uh, who wants to go first? Eddie or Mike? Uh, I'll, I'll go, go first. first. Oh, go ahead. Oh, Mike, oh, wow, both. Uh, dang, man. All right, I'll go quick. I'll go quick. Uh, just shout out to Cleon. Uh, he helped me out this week uh, with getting tickets to for, for me and my dad to go to the game since I got to bring him to his first game. Um he loved it. He loved the stadium. He thought it was great. Um, you know, uh, happy we at least got a point. So that way he got to see, see something exciting. But uh, I, me and him even talking back when I was a kid, we went to maybe one or two Tampa Bay mutiny games um, before they folded to see where we're at now. Soccer as a country, you know, back then you'd hope to have maybe 5,000 people, 10,000 people come to a Tampa Bay mutiny game. Whereas we had 23,000 in a stadium built specifically for soccer, a uh, random regular season game, not much of an impact to it. Um, so that was just kind of super cool for me to come full circle with my dad for him to see that. And uh, I, I also want to go ahead and I, I'm sorry if I'm going to step on one of your guys' toes for this, but shout out to the, the, the PA announcer for kids night. Uh, um, because I got to really go ahead and just say that that gave all of us a really good laugh when we did the YSA chant and the little kid came over the, the loudspeaker to say, Hey, it's kids night. Don't say mean words. That was, I was dying. That was actually the I was PA dying laughing. Kids. Those are was it really? kids. Was it yeah. really Timmy Barr's kids? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got texts from people like, like Jake in England. There's like, is there a kid in the PA? And. I had this uh, this kid who's Manchester City fan. They were from England next to me. And I was like, this isn't some weird American quirk. It's just kids night. But we have a ball to <laughs> Just to let you know. He's like, okay. All right. Go ahead, Eddie. Go out your shout yeah, out. Yeah, I was in shout, a shout out to, to Mike's dad. Cool guy. I mean, man, this guy oozes New York. I, uh, you know, it's just like he was talking and I felt like Reuben sandwich, dirty water hot dog. It was great. It was just, it was fantastic. He was just nice and and. Uh, I just I, I thought it was cool. I like meeting the family of people, and uh, I knew he was he was he was going to be there. So I stopped by and have time to to go go uh, go say hi. And, and he was he was cool. And a shout out to uh, Ronel Blanco. He great story. Houston Astros. He just threw a no hitter. Um, he <laughs> uh, 17 for the franchise. He he um, didn't get to the major league. They must two. have cheated somehow. Oh, this guy again, man. This. They, you know, that, that I think uh, Jason Christ was our coach and that happened. Get over it. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> um, he, I think he got called up when he was 28 years old. And uh, this is his 10th career start. He just had a baby the other day. They, they told him the day he, he had a baby that uh, he made. A, he, he started the next day and um, they, they told him he, you've made uh, like a, in the, you know, spring training. They told him, hey, you made the roster right off right as he got off the mound. So that was a class way to do it for the Astros. And um, and then it, this is his tenth career start, thirty years old now, and he throws a no hitter, which is great because we just got swept by those dirty water dog hot dog Yankees last week, and and I, I was just like, I need something. I'm not gonna say it sucks, and then we we get swept by the Astro, I mean by the Yankees. So it was just, uh, just well, at and, least he doesn't have the Orlando City curse. When you have a baby, it goes downhill after that. Right? He just yeah, usually especially the second one. That's true. That's true. And um and uh. Yeah, just shout out to 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 to, to Mike uh, to Papa Sp- Spillane and uh, and to Ronel Blanco. Go Strokes. Awesome. All right, my shout out goes to the guy that looks like he's trying to become a firefighter or something with that mustache now that he has. But it looks good, yeah. Mike. FDNY. Mike, that mustache does look. Good. Are you NYAFD or what? What's yeah, going on? FD, here? FD, What's FD, up with the mustache, man? Never forget nine uh, eleven. Hey man, I just like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out I, if you're a firefighter I, or if you're Ron Jeremy or something. Uh, hey. I'll probably go more. Probably go more firefighter, and uh, <laughs> I definitely, you know, definitely know my way around a uh, around the barbecue. 
you know. Okay. But, just, but not like not like an asado. Like I know my way around the hamburgers and the hot dogs. The hot dogs. I, I can't do the, I can't do the fancy. No stuff. picanha. No picanha. No, not yet. No. 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 Okay. Right. <laughs> I'll teach you. I'll teach you that one day. It's I'm actually down. pretty darn good. Um, but no, shout out goes to um, I don't know who the shout out goes to. Caitlin Clark for winning today, I guess, beating LSU after all the trash talking that they were doing and everything. So, but um, I, I just want Orlando City to win, to be honest with you guys. Shout out to let's get Orlando City to win. <laughs> That's what my shout out is. I'm just fed up of losing. I'm fed up of, you know, I don't want the back in the day with Jason Christ, James O'Connor, you know, Adrian Heat days. Um, and I just don't want this to be like how Eddie says, don't be happy with just us making the playoffs and getting knocked out of the first round. Let's go all the way, man. And if, if he's not the coach, then it's time to get somebody to the next level that will take us there, you know? So, but definitely we got to do something. We got to get it. We have two weeks to prepare. And if we come out DC and we smoke them and the next game, we go to Montreal and smoke them. Uh, it's going to be lovely here in Toronto, here, uh, here at a uh, Intercoast stadium. So with that said, guys, it's been great. It's been awesome. Bumos Orlando. Let's continue, you know, to get this team. We got to be on their backs, but we also got to be on the backs of the coaches for doing everything, you know. So, Wait, go ahead. JJ, did, has your name been popping out this whole time, or did you just change it? I didn't notice No, it's it. been out. This is the second show that I've had poppy out. Oh, but I was on the last two shows. Oh, no, you weren't on last week, right? Oh, yeah. Last week I wasn't, so, but the weeks ago, yeah, oh, it popped okay. out on I, my name. I, yeah, I listened to it. I did not. I this whole time we we said it's a short show. We don't have a preview. And I said, Mike, yeah. like uh, Alex said, it, that's the famous last words. An hour twenty one in, and I just noticed it says poppy out this whole time. Yeah, an hour and twenty one minutes. Famous last we words, did it. Man. Hey, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And Orlando Lions did. So, guys, until next time, vamos Orlando. Thank you. Thanks for joining us this week on the Orlando Lions Den Podcast. Don't forget to follow us at Orlando Lions Den on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. See you next week in the Den.